we want to now consider the curl of a general rotation field in space. So we want to begin by considering an arbitrary vector field, F, defined by the cross product of vectors A and vectors R, where vector A has components A sub 1, A sub 2, A sub 3, and vector R has components X, Y, and Z. So to define the components of the general rotation field, let's go ahead and compute this cross product. So we have our vector field here defined by the cross product of vector A and vector R. So we'll put this into that 3 by 3 matrix and take the determinant. So the first row is the standard unit vectors. Second row are the components of A. Third row are the components of vector R. And we take the determinant of this matrix, which leaves us with a sub 2 times z minus a sub 3 times y multiplied by i hat minus a sub 1 times z minus a sub 3 times x j hat plus a sub 1 times y minus a sub 2 times x k hat. And so this is what we call the general rotation field in three dimensions. So these are the components of the general rotation field in R3. So it looks a little bit different than the rotation field that we know from two dimensions, but let's look at an illustration here to draw connections and make some additional conclusions about what's going on. So what I want to do now is let's go ahead and suppose that vector A is a unit vector pointing in the z direction. So we have components 0, 0, 1. So how is this going to affect our general rotation field? So we know the general rotation field in space, vector f, is defined by the cross product of vector a and vector r. So again, putting that into our 3 by 3 matrix and taking the determinant, we have i hat, j hat, k hat, 0, 0, 1, x, y, z. And so computing this cross product here, we are left with 0 minus y, i hat, minus 0 minus x, j hat, plus 0 minus 0, k hat. And so we're left with components. We see you have minus y, i hat, negative times the negative gives us plus x, j hat, and then we have 0 times k hat, which you don't even need to include, we can conclude that therefore the general rotation field in three dimensions here is defined as negative y, x, zero. And so we can actually see that two-dimensional rotation field in here. So let's recall that the rotation field in R2 or in the plane, is defined as vector f is equal to the vector with components negative y, x. But since this vector field is in space, in three dimensions, we can't simply ignore that third component. But we can make the following conclusions. We can say that since this vector field f is in space, the kth component here is implying that the axis of rotation is in the kth direction. So since our vector field is in space, the kth component implies that the axis of rotation is in the kth direction. So in the kth direction, or in other words, in the direction of vector A. So in other words, we can make the big conclusion here that the axis of rotation is in the direction of vector A. So the 
axis of rotation for the general rotation field is in the direction of vector A. So we're ready now to consider the formal definition. So we say that the general rotation vector field, vector F, is defined as the cross product of vector A and vector R, where the non-zero constant vector A is the axis of rotation, and vector R is defined by components x, y, and z. So using this, we have the following conclusions. So we say that for all non-zero vectors A, that the magnitude of the curl of our general rotation field, or the magnitude of the cross product of the del operator and our vector field, is equal to two times the magnitude of the vector defining the axis of rotation. So we say that the magnitude of the cross product of the del operator and the rotation field is equal to two times the magnitude of vector A, or the axis of rotation. We could also conclude that the divergence of our rotation field, or the dot product of the del operator and the vector field, is zero. Source free. So we have that the divergence of our rotation field, defined as the dot product of the del operator with that field, is equal to zero. So it's source free. So in addition to this, we can define the constant angular speed of the vector field. So starting by using property 1 here, we know that 2 times the magnitude of vector A is equal to the magnitude of the curl of the general rotation field. And we define the constant angular speed. If we divide both sides of this equation by 2, we have that our angular, the constant angular speed, is defined as the magnitude of vector A being equal to 1 half times the magnitude of the cross product of the del operator with our general rotation field. And so we can easily verify all three of these properties, in particular these, starting with these first two, using just a little computation. So I encourage you to challenge yourself now and to verify these two properties.